Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is time for another sketchbook tour. Uh, as always, I'm using Strathmore Tone Tan Paper. Uh, these regular big pens, um, I use two different kinds. Uh, they're just cheap though. You can get a whole pack of these for like two bucks. And then uh, Master's Touch markers and white jelly roller pen for highlights. Uh, so all the drawings in here, that's what I used. Um, so this first sketch is just kind of a robot. Uh, he's kind of got this weird, like awkward pose with his hips pushed forward. Uh, but the pose is pretty stiff, I would say. It's just, which is fine, he's a robot, so it doesn't have a very organic, you know, pose to him. Um, but overall, it's an okay drawing. Um, one thing I want to say, talk about, uh, you guys have asked about this pink color. Uh, this pink is fluorescent rose. And as you can see, the coverage on the paper is so nice. I mean, it almost looks painted. It's just so vibrant on the tone tan. And one thing the tone tan paper does is it doles colors down. Uh, so colors aren't always, you know, they take on that uh, tone tan color because markers are transparent. So you see that tan come through. So like this yellow color you're seeing is actually uh, fluorescent yellow. Um, so you can see it's definitely dulled down, but the pink man really pops on the tone tan. So I love it uh, But as far as an overall sketch, this one's okay uh, Here's just some random character sketches So with this um, You know, sometimes I'm just trying to think of different characters to draw like I've said before uh, This guy's kind of a punk character. I drew him first and then I started on her like another punk character and then this is just a random profile that I decided to draw. Uh, profiles are tough. One thing I always like try and focus on is like the shape of the face, how big the forehead is, like if it's halfway down the head, the eyes are halfway down from the top. And it's really common to actually make this too short. Um, I think it's just how we view people's faces. Uh, so when you're trying to draw from an imagination, a lot of times you'll draw the eyes too high up on the head. So it's just something to keep in mind. So this is definitely one of the most elaborate sketches I've done in a while. Uh, I've been saying, <clears throat> and a few of you in the comments I've talked to, you know, I should do a predator sketch. I have never done one really. Um, and I really spent a good amount of time on this, this one. Uh, overall, I really liked it. You know, there's some things I probably would have changed. I did a bunch of different skulls, like creature skulls and stuff in the background. Not just humans, but other aliens. Um, the color scheme, you know, his green armor, uh, I liked. Um, and yeah, this guy is, I, I think I, I thought of him more like the king of the predators. Uh, he's, you know, he's got these horns and stuff that I just added uh, just for my own little flavor to him. Um, but yeah, overall sketch, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, compositionally though, one thing, like when I'm drawing in my sketchbook, a lot of times I'll just start sketching and I'm not, not always, but a lot of times I'm not really considering like if his hand's going to be cut off on the page over here or where his feet are going to end. I'm just drawing, um, which those are definitely things that in certain drawings I'll consider. Uh, if I'm thinking of it as a final piece of artwork or something like that. But generally when I'm drawing in a sketchbook, I just drawing for fun, drawing to work on, you know, rendering techniques, at least right now. <clears throat> so it's kind of what this is. Um, but yeah, pretty cool sketch. Liked his face. Uh, it looks like he's yelling at somebody or something like that. I don't know. He's definitely not relaxed. He seems pretty, pretty tight grip on his spear. So, but yeah, I like this one, pretty cool. Uh, this is kind of a random like forest elf girl. Uh, this, drawings like this um, are drawings where I couldn't think of anything to draw. A lot of times I'll just start drawing a head and then it turned into an elf girl or something like that because I was drawing a weird pose or something. So uh, that's kind of all this one is. I obviously didn't spend a ton of time on it. A lot of times on these two, I'll not fill in all the colors. Like I'll do real light marker work uh, because, you know, I don't want to waste marker on just sketches. But at the same time, 
the marker really helps, you know, the sketches come alive. So I'm really into wanting a one wheel, which if you haven't seen one wheels, um, they're like electric, uh, kind of like a snowboard with a big fat tire in the middle. And it looks super fun. I, I live right next to like this canyon walking path. And I think it would be a blast on those. They can kind of go off road and stuff. So I was kind of inspired to do a, a one wheel sketch uh, for this. Um, but yeah, I'm just, it's hard to pull the trigger on one of these because they're so dang expensive. Uh, if you guys have one or have ridden one, uh, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. So uh, let me know. But yeah, that's kind of the story. A lot of times I'll just draw things that like in my life that I'm inspired by video games, a movie, comic books, uh, just anything and everything. Uh, sometimes I'll watch my little girls dancing and want to draw, you know, ballet or something like that. So I just tend to draw what I'm inspired by. Uh, so this is kind of a space sci-fi, um, scene going on here. Uh, I like when I draw whole scenes like this that tell kind of a story. Um, sometimes I, you know, forget to do this every now and again, and I have a lot of fun, like, you know, in my own mind coming up with what's actually happening here. Uh, looks like this guy is maybe visiting a, a foreign planet or a new planet and out of nowhere this thing just kind of comes up maybe out of the ground or something with this weird alien guy riding it. Um, and so, yeah, I love drawings that kind of tell a story. And this is one of those. Most of the drawings that you've seen previously are just a character or something like that. They don't really lend themselves to uh, a narrative, but this one definitely does. So um, things I liked about this one, uh, the creature, I did two nostrils on the top. It's always hard to kind of come up with creative ideas with monsters. There's so many um, concept art for monsters and stuff like that. You don't want to copy other people. You want to come up with original ideas. A lot of times the best way to do that is referencing actual animals, deep sea creatures, things like that. Um, which I actually didn't do for this one. I just, the other way to come up with weird concepts is just make shapes. I started out this whole drawing with this thing's head, just doing a couple circles here, uh, making the mouth, the eyes lower on the mouth, um, and then these weird shapes, and then it kind of just morphed into this worm thing. So that's kind of that's kind of how this one happened. But um, I actually like this one; kind of fun. Like I said, cool little narrative. Uh, here's some fairy drawings, uh, just random sketches. Um, I like this one's hair and the the pose. Uh, again, all these have been done from no reference. So if I use reference, I'll tell you guys. Um, reference is a good thing for sure. I love referencing. Uh, but sometimes I'm just sketching for fun and I don't want to, I'm not referencing anything. So, uh, but um, everything you've seen so far has no reference or anything. I'll tell, I think there's some in here that do though. But uh, yeah, fun little sketches, just real quick. Uh, here's some like beast people. Uh, there's a show my daughter likes to watch where it's like Beast Men or something like that. So it's kind of inspired by that, like humanoid, like cat beast people. So uh, I didn't add a whole lot of color to this one. I like this guy's face a lot. Uh, it's like big, masculine. It's nice contrast to her. Um, so kind of, kind of cool. The only thing I don't like about this drawing is her hand. I'm not really 100% sure. I think it's the finger length on the pinky and stuff. Um, that doesn't make it look supernatural. And it's also the bend in her wrist isn't natural. Uh, so that's, let's not look at that, okay? Nobody look at that. But that's kind of a cool little sketch. Liked her face a lot. Uh, this is super random for me. Uh, kind of cartoony, uh, robot boy style. I don't even know how. Sometimes thing, accidents just happen. This is an, like, never drawn a whole lot of things like this, especially him. Um, it looks like maybe a Saturday mar morning cartoon villain or something. Uh, and yeah, real bright colors. Uh, didn't obviously color the whole thing. That would have been a lot of um, marker usage in this drawing that some, you know, if I get this far, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to waste the colors. I, 
served its purpose and um, me working on different things. So a lot of times I'll just uh, quit while I'm ahead. So, but this is kind of an interesting one. I like random sketches like this in my sketchbook where they kind of just look different. Uh, so this is kind of like a mushroom queen. I still haven't finished this one. I actually bounce back and forth between sketches a lot. Um, sometimes I'll draw like three or four sketches with just this pink big pen right here. Uh, so that's what you see, that pink that's coming through there. Um, I'll do three or four sketches. And then after I get three or four sketches done, I'll kind of go back through and be like, oh, I really like this one. And I'll work on that one for a while. And then I'll go to a different sketch. And because I never know, like when I start something, like how far I want to take it. Uh, so this is, this is one I really want to finish though. She's kind of cool. Uh, and this one, you know, fits the page very well, fairly well. I did use reference on this, on her, um, for just like her pose. So a lot of times if I wanna come up with unique poses or if I feel like I'm in a rut with poses and stuff like that, I'll definitely reference a bunch of poses. So I referenced her pose on this one, which I like the pose a lot. Um, but yeah, a few things I probably would have done differently because obviously her, the way her, like, I guess it's kind of like lingerie or something bathing suit or something, the pink color. I love that pink so much, but I would have done a totally way more organic style of outfit on her. I don't know why I did this. It's really silly. Uh, it looks out of place given that she's like a mushroom queen. So that's kind of weirdly awkward, but sometimes the unexpected, and this is in marketing too. I do a lot of marketing and um, graphic design and stuff. And a lot of times people get used to seeing uh, certain types of things, uh, design, or just they used to seeing like, like you see it in advertising, uh, one company that did a good job of, and this is totally going off the tracks on this topic. Hope you guys don't mind, but Old Spice did, started doing those ads like years ago where they were just super awkward ads and they were so effective because uh, as a society, we all get kind of trapped in these like, expectations and so when you start seeing even if it's really great design you start seeing it over and over so you stop responding to it um, so when somebody does something that's really unexpected or seems out of place it gets our attention and that's something to keep in mind when you're doing art or doing anything um, is that coming up with something that's unexpected can be extremely effective so anyway uh, that's her I loved her face on that I feel like she's got that glare uh she's kind of looking through you so i did this one for halloween uh my daughter's been watching tons of cool pumpkin carving videos on youtube which there's some awesome channels um i just when i'm drawing or doing something i always overhear her watching uh these pumpkin carving videos or drawing videos she's on youtube a ton learning and uh is loves the art stuff both of my daughters are and I always kind of like eavesdrop on whatever they're watching. And so that inspired this guy. Um, uh, she was watching a pumpkin carving video and I'm like, oh, I'd like to draw a scary pumpkin. Best part about this though, I love his mouth. And then I love his rib cage with all these little pumpkins kind of falling out of his stomach. Um, I think that's probably the coolest aspect of this. So, uh, and here's some random creature uh, sketches. So, one thing I will recommend if you're doing like character faces. Um, so this guy is the first one I drew and he is just from my mind, kind of boring. Um, you know, I know like facial structure and anatomy and things like that. But when I really want to get unique with things, I'll like make faces in my camera on my phone and then <laughs> I'll like do creatures based on these weird faces that I make. And you can just see how much more interesting, like this guy, this guy, these are all kind of referenced from we as weird of faces that I can make into my um, phone camera. And uh, it's just a great way to come up with weird characters and stuff, so. Um, but anyway, um, that's the last little bit of sketches for this sketchbook tour. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I know, I, you know, I've been doing these sketchbook tours and I wanna do other videos, I just, uh, you know, haven't 
sat down to do them, I have ideas. My next video I really wanna do for you guys is a step-by-step, -step, uh, real time, like 15 minute, from this pen to, you know, my dark outline pen, to some highlights and the markers, just like step-by-step, -step, real simple drawing in my style. So look for that video, um, just so, you know, I think that'll be interesting for you guys. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, and if you have any requests for character videos, something like that, um, I'm gonna still continue to do the sketchbook tours because I love doing them. Obviously, I always draw in my sketchbook. So these will always be videos you guys can expect, uh, expect from me. I just like to like, you know, have a few different other types of videos I do so I can get videos up a little bit more often. Once every couple of weeks, uh, you know, it's kind of scarce, I know that. I know people are always asking why I don't upload more. Um, and a lot of times it's just I'm busy doing life. Yesterday was Halloween, we had an awesome Halloween. I hope you guys did too. Um, you know, with everything that's going on, we were a little worried that Halloween wouldn't be as fun for the girls this year, but they absolutely had a blast. So, you know, everything turned out great. Um, but anyway, like I said, uh, thanks for uh, checking out my channel and watching my videos, and uh, I will catch you guys later.